Welcome back to Faster Me. We are out here in San Ardo. And many of you may not know where San Ardo is. Um, I didn't either, had never heard of it. So thanks to my teammate Mar Marlena Bemis, who's here um, commentating with me. Hi. Um, she was all set, said she was gonna go do it, had booked a nice little Airbnb, really nice little casita in Paso Robles, and I decided to join her, even though I was kind of ready for off season. And I'm so happy you did. It was a lot of fun. Um, and San Ardo is close to NorCal. Um, I think it's in Monterey County. So uh, a couple hours in the north of where we usually race. And, you know, we got such a warm welcome. The girls were so friendly. I think I met Andrea, who was racing Masters, she's a Cat 3, but was racing Masters this race. She said she's done the race a few times. I uh, met her standing in line for the bathroom. Maybe too much information, but that's the truth. Um, so she kind of embarrassed us and, and welcomed us, some riders from Southern California at the beginning of the race, and everyone kind of cheered. And, and the vibe was really positive and, and very welcoming. So. I don't know. What did you think about that, Marlena? It was good. I was definitely a little nervous to be racing out of Southern California. Um, but it's a relatively flat course, which I was excited about. Um, I think the road races around us are typically more hilly. Um, and speaking of this road race, it's a two, mo or a two laps um, of like a 20-some mile loop. Um, here we're kind of on that first stretch before it turned. Um, and the pavement is really rough <laughs> all throughout the course. I think there's going to be one stretch of good pavement, but you can kind of see we're hobbling a little bit. Um, everyone's kind of taking this first stretch easy, but it was, it was brutal. <laughs> yeah, I said I never want to hear anybody complain about a... <laughs> a rough road down in some of the rides that we do because uh, there was a few spots that that were pretty brutal a bridge in particular we'll, we'll talk about later but the good thing is is there's not a lot of traffic it's pretty much the road to ourselves and a few of the roads don't even have a center line divider but the center line rule wasn't in effect and <laughs> He said, when there's no center line, just stay towards the right. <laughs> so, you know, that may have meant the whole road because some of the roads were pretty narrow. Um, unbeknownst to, to us also, this was kind of the finale of the women's series for NCNCA. And so a lot of women really came out in full force. I, there was one team, Alto Velo, that had um, maybe seven or eight riders. And I heard later it was maybe their training camp. So. They were in full of full force, and it was kind of exciting to see some team tactics. Unfortunately, um, Marlena's going to talk about them because I didn't get to see too much of them. My plan was to record the first 30 minutes, and then the end, which I did, but unfortunately the, the end did not have too many people in it as I was off the back. Um, so this is a little bit of an incline. And actually the finish is just a shoot off right there. So this is probably one of the bigger hills of the whole course. Um, and it really did stay together for the first lap. I kind of expected people to be zooming to the front to make some moves. But again, we stayed together for a pretty long time. Um, yeah, you see, Marlena and I are a little tentative. I think both of us just kind of not knowing what to expect. So we are in the back of the field. Um, I d didn't point her out, but <laughs> but Marlena was there on my my right. So hopefully she'll be coming into the, the screen shortly to see her. But I think we were just kind of seeing how it went. And then, you know, I I was trying to do a little bit better job drafting, which I think sometimes I did, and then sometimes not not quite as much, just not knowing people's wheels. And then the road was so rough, so it was hard to <laughs> be right behind. And you see the, right here, there's just, you know, a lot of stuff going on. They said it's an agricultural road, so there's produce and stuff kind of all over the road at different times. And I think 
in my mind, my excuse for being in the back at the very front was um, Alto Velo had five out of 12 women in the four or five field. And I think I was trying to figure out if they were coordinated enough to work together. Because I feel like you can have a, a large number of women, but if they don't know how to work together, then it's not a concern. Um, so I was trying to see if they were talking um, or riding close together, and they pretty much were. So that was bad news <laughs> for us, team two. Um, but they definitely got into a line and they were hugging this left side. Um, so that was kind of my thought process of being in the back, though not the best. <laughs> yeah, and that, that rider um, was kind of sitting in between two wheels and I am a little tentative to kind of go and you know, fight fight for a wheel. I'm still not as assertive as I need to be. She was pretty assertive the whole race. I, I was hoping she would hold on because um, she was disrupting their little train mm. quite often. Um, so I was hoping she would keep doing that. Yeah, on the descent, she actually goes, I think, to the front. And fortunately, I didn't, didn't follow because <laughs> going downhill, there's there's some, um, you know, good points where, where you can, yes, exactly. Yeah, so we're climbing. We're at 5% here. Um, it was not super long. It didn't feel too bad. Um, I think I was still kind of in panic nervous mode, but we did fall back a little bit here. And that's me. And there you are. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm going to kind of scoot over and try to get on your wheel. And I looked at my heart rate at one point. I see it's 171 here. Um, and I thought I may be in trouble because that's really high for me. And the effort did not feel like it should be that high. I see I am doing, you know, threshold effort, but it didn't feel too hard. And I should have just slid up and gone stuck a little closer to my teammates wheel because Marlena you do a good job kind of moving up here. I was trying. I could tell so the cat there were three cat three women in this field and I could tell they were in the front and they were not pushing the pace as much as I expected. They were kind of sitting in and everyone was behind them for a decent amount of time. So I was glad to see that I think. Um, but now I don't know, this is like the first long stretch. So if you think of the course like a long rectangle, this is the, the longer part um, with a little bit more elevation change. Um, the pavement starts to get bad. <laughs> but we're, we're staying, you know, side by side. I'm glad you were right behind me. I, yeah, I think we, we stayed together for a good chunk of the, the race. Um, I'm trying to, I think your number is 751, so in case anyone's confused, uh, obviously I know who you are and you're right in front of me, but I don't always draft the best, so it could cause some confusion. Um, and I think a lot of the women knew each other. Um, there, was, there was a lot of com camaraderie and yeah, I thought at this point, like, okay, I'm not going to have a problem. Like, it's just going to stick together because I think I heard from a number of people like it usually ends in a sprint finish. So I was thinking, okay, this is decent. Like, I can sit in this. It, it didn't feel too hard. But unfortunately, <laughs> that was not the case. They also said that attacks on the first lap don't stick. I heard that in a couple of Mm -hmm. um, I bet they were probably doing more. I should have kept that in my head. I should have remembered that. <laughs> um, on the second half, uh, Alto Velo definitely was working together, and I, I should have remembered that. But that's, you know, a later Marlena problem. <laughs> and this downhill was pretty nice. We're using the whole road going 34 miles an hour. And yeah, I mean, it, this felt pretty decent. This, this stretch right here of road wasn't as beat up, if I recall correctly. Um, so it, it felt, 
you know, like a decent place. And I thought, okay, little recovery. My heart is down to 160. And we're going fast. 24 on 2%. Yeah. Was... That's moving along. And we had we drove this course the day before mm -hmm. when we were getting in, and we we noted a couple corners that were a little more technical on this first side. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think one is coming up kind of soon, especially with just cho like choppy pavement. Mm -hmm. Or I after was, a downhill. Yeah. yeah, we we used a little trash bag as <laughs> as, as our navigation, so we made marks of where what mile markers things were at then had to do a lot of work because we used it from the speedometer of the car and not like mile one so that was a little challenging to think of but just having never been here we kind of wanted to you know see what the the course was like and here we are climbing again which I promised I was promised was a flat course <laughs> Yeah, the hills didn't feel that bad either, and it didn't feel, I mean, like there was a little punch to them, but yeah, I thought that there'd be a lot more attacking, but there was just little tests, like it seemed like at the top of the hill there was like a little test. Mm -hmm. Here I tried to kind of make up some ground, but then you run into a conflict, well, at least I do in my mind, of when the, when teammates are next to each other, you don't want to get in and be disrespectful to like their train but then do you go all the way up and fight for like the second wheel I'm just out here in the wind doing work by myself I don't know where you are at this point I don't know if you stayed back or if you came I up back. <laughs> no I was rooting for you I was like go Ellen go uh. <laughs> yeah you look good doing it <laughs> oh boy and I think pretty soon, I believe that's Sulin in front. No, the. But she's going to get a. Oh, there she comes. Yeah. Um, so she's a Cat 3 rider, and there she is moving up to the front. And she is unfortunately going to get a flat tire. And I think it's like right here, and she kind of throws her hand up and it's like, oh, I flatted. So I know she was very disappointed. Uh, disappointed um, she is going to turn out to be uh, the biggest uh, star of my video because uh, she's going to have the time at the end so she gives me some motivation at the end to do a little hard work when I was suffering tremendously by myself and here's a nice little downhill again um, trying to just tuck in conserve a little energy I think Alto Velo did a good job of protecting their train, actually. They they warded off people pretty well, I think. Mm -hmm. um, whether it was on purpose or not, they did a good job of it. Um, Justin, the sweeper, I guess, the person in the back of their train, they threw down pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's nice, though, to see the competitiveness of some other... Because I saw one move where Alto Velo had kind of made a motion that she was getting in mm -hmm. behind one of her teammates, and a different rider did not let her in. So, yeah. so even though there was a lot of camaraderie, it's nice to see that people are racing, and it's not just out there, like, friendly, like, completely friendly. There's still, you know, a good spirit of competition. There you are again. We're back together. Yeah, the the noises that my bike was making with all these bumps was terrifying me. I would just rip it and just hope and I don't know. I was good energy out there. Yes, I was trying to make sure to relax my hands and not grip too hard and I was worried that like my chain was going to fall off mm -hmm. or the derailleur was going to come off because mm -hmm. it was like bumping so bad. But you know what? 
Our bikes are made really well, so I guess that's the benefit of getting a. Um, yeah. That's what. Um, I don't know. I lost my train of thought, but that, I guess it's it's good to have a good good bike to mm -hmm. be able to withstand that. Though sometimes we go over some bumps and I'd be in a different gear, so that was <laughs> exciting. You know, <laughs> kept it lively. Um, one other concern or notice we had going into this weekend was it's definitely a lot warmer in San Ardo and in that county than what we were used to riding in for a couple of weeks, at least me personally. Because that's one thing that I had in mind was the heat. I know Ellen, you like the heat. But it still takes a toll on your body. Like it's mm -hmm. still, even if, I mean, yes, I think I, per, I like the heat better than I like the cold. And I think maybe I do better compared to other people in the heat. Mm -hmm. However, it really causes your heart rate to be higher in it. You know, it's way easier to get dehydrated. Like there was a few times where I needed water and I needed it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I could not, you know, manage. And I think in this race, I went through both of my bottles of water. Um, I, took quite a few gels and stuff. Um, I think you did better than you normally do, Marlena, but still um, under-fueled, I'm sure. Yeah. I just didn't, yeah. It was just a little, I would say nerves. My nerves got the better mm -hmm. of me. Another thing that well, I'll point out later when I'm, you know, at the, at the end of the race, but there is a feed zone in, in the race and there is neutral support. So they had people handing out water bottles that weren't specific to a team. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of fun. Did you pick up any? No, because I didn't have space and I liked my um, <laughs> my PAA water bottle. So then I was like, ooh, do I leave it here and ruin risk it getting lost or ruined? <laughs> um, and then I was like, I don't really need it, you know, because after you come through one lap, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, that's one water bottle. I don't need another, but I kind of wanted to. For practice. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hard job to be the feed zone person. It was on a hill. I'm not sure if that is good because the speeds are slower it, um, to grab the water bottle. But there you are again. Look at us in the back. But still, you know. Okay, so I ended up riding with seven, five, six right here. When I got dropped, I went into time trial mode. Um, I can pull up her name, but I went into time trial mode just because I know I can do that. Emily Shell, it looks like. Emily. Seven, five, six. Um, hopefully that's Emily. Um, but she and another woman, I don't remember yet. It will probably be my senior, I'll probably remember. But, they caught me after probably 10 miles. I held, held on pretty good. Um, and then she and... 36 miles an hour here down this stretch. Oh. Since there's no center line, it kind of, we're doing the whole road. But th you see how narrow the road is, so. <laughs> and not a car in sight. <laughs> trying to see if I could gain some spaces here. Oh, see, there's a there's what I was talking about. The Alto Velo girl went in, but it may have been her own, I don't know if that was her own teammate, but didn't give the space. And here I'm undecided. Do I want to back off and get behind Marlena? Do I want to... The girl in front of me was a little taller of a rider, so I was like, oh, I can maybe get a little less when resistance, but I'm not close enough to get the full benefit. You're still sussing it out, trying to figure out mm -hmm. what's going on. Yep, I, I, <laughs> I had faith that I could figure it out until, you know, the bridge came. So this is what they were kind of, so Alto Velo, right there, they were in a triangle, and that's what they were doing for the first, probably, first lap, is they were, oh, she came up on the right. And see, so she, but 
they would form a triangle, probably like a four person triangle. Three person, four. You can't really do a triangle with four people. But they would form a triangle and then send someone off the front Mm -hmm. and then sew the rest of us down. I know. Someone talking to someone after the race, um, those part of their team said, I could run interference. Like I was in shape. I could run interference. I couldn't go off down the road, but I could run interference. So it's really nice to see too, because we talk a lot about some of the lower levels of racing and not having team tactics. So it was really awesome to see a team in there and, you know, having some strategy and trying to work together and, and ride together. So it's motivation to try to build up, have our women all racing together next year and maybe go travel and do some road races. The woman to my left uh, in the Monterey Junior uh, development team, she was strong. I, I kind of had Um, and then one of the cat three riders was next to me. Um, and there's the Tarun rider, I think. Ilan is her name. Um, unfortunately, she had a, a crash. I'm not sure who else went down at some point, but she was not sure if she was kind of heading things up, but she was very generous and gave us some of the goodies that sponsors had donated a water bottle stuffed with some goose so mm-hmm. it was um very nice of her and you know we just definitely wanted to kind of give her some credit and ju- just in general the the whole event was you know well done they they were trying to get some volunteers to come out for the there was a university road race the next day in Santa Cruz, and they were gonna have to cancel some of it if they didn't get enough volunteers. And I felt bad, like we could volunteer, but we were volunteering for the CSR the next day down in, you know, San Dimas, Urban Canyon. And I don't know why I don't just stay behind Marlena, but here I try to go up to the front and I, I'm doing, whoa, wow, 250 some watts. I did not think that I was doing that. I'm still doing it. And then I run into a, <laughs> I run into an Alto Velo train and I am wondering what I should do. Yeah. Get in, seems easy, but. But I didn't, yeah, no, know how to. I should have followed her up up the road because there was someone else doing the work. But it's a little bumpy. Yeah. yeah. So here you can see just these these bumps are brutal. I mean, we you see everybody standing. Their their whole bikes shaking. <laughs> it was painful. And so then I'm just going backwards. So all that effort just, you know, here I am again. Now, now I'm in the back with Marlena. <laughs> they made it hard to, to go into the train. They were holding their own pretty well. I mean, they were letting the only girls in and organized. And I think just being... You know, it's not my strongest suit anyway, being less familiar with the road, with the people. And I'm just not as assertive in general. It's hard to, it's hard for me at this point to really do do the work to go and kind of get on a wheel that I need to, to, to stay in a go. race. Yeah. 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 We're better at time trials. <laughs> <laughs> by, by ourselves. 
<laughs> no excuses. <laughs> All these people give me lots of excuses to do lots of work by myself. <laughs> but no, it was a really good experience. Just <laughs> painful and my heart, my heart was so high. I sent a, set a few heart rate threshold records. So I, w I was suffering. So, yeah, I mean, I think a 90 minute heart rate threshold um, I, it was like maybe 160, 170, 171. Got a, got a statistic keeper over here, so that, that's helpful. But yes, it was, um, I was just suffering. It was, it was probably the, the most brutal that I felt maybe physically, mentally. Because this is normally the type of suffering that I like. True. And I also got some PRs. <laughs> For all time PRs, I got um, I PRs my 90 minute power and my 90 minute heart rate. Oh, wow. What was your 90 minute power? <laughs> uh, 168. And your heart rate? 180. Wow. It's uh, <laughs> pretty high. What do you max out at? Um, two. During a crit, I've seen 205. Um, <laughs> and I am coming back from COVID. This is my first race back after COVID. I, no, we did We Laverne, did Laverne. Which was a couple laps. That was my form up to this. But I was home, quarantined, and COVID, and I found this race online. And I was <laughs> bored, so I was like, I'm going to sign up for this. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with my high heart rate. Uh -huh. Yeah, I had COVID about a month before you, which is crazy, but we were off the bike for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any hard efforts for almost a month. And so I had a couple weeks to try to kind of prepare, but I was not prepared physically or mentally, but it was still fun and a good experience. And now we know what to expect, so. Mm -hmm. And here again, I'm trying to, I know I need to be towards the front to be in good position for the race, but I'm still doing too much work and just slightly off to the side. So instead of sliding in behind somebody, I'm just cruising by myself and pushing the wind at above threshold and going backwards. Wow. You're strong. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Uh, yeah. Three fifty, three seventy-five watts. Oh. And here I am oh, trying to get moving. back on your wheel, but, but I'm, yeah. So all these efforts, it's easy to see now why I got popped. Yeah. So, um, for me, um, why I got popped? <laughs> there was a, a hill. Um, and I, we had went over the hill and I, I saw a group of girls that could not hang with the main pack up that hill. And I was like, okay, don't follow those wheels, Marlena. And what do you know? I end up behind those same women and I look up and the front pack is gone. Well, and what, you know, you and I are both kind of tentative. We know the bridge is coming up yeah. and the women obviously knew the bridge were coming up and they actually attacked before the bridge or accelerated. So it was strung out even before the bridge and the bridge was brutal. Water bottle falling down, I got someone's tire almost, I mean, they almost lost it going over like a large bump. Um, and then I kind of stayed behind Marlena and she was able to do a hard effort to get back on. And I said, this is the time to go. I really did as hard of an effort as I could. I mean it, and I couldn't, couldn't hold on. I had a little bit of hope because the pro field came by. <laughs> and so I, I figured that they would kind of be, a, you know, somewhat neutralized while they passed the women and they were. So I made a little bit of ground but it was on a hill and there just, it wasn't enough to catch. So, so I'm gonna probably turn, be turning the video off here in about a minute. Ooh. 
but it was probably the closest I've ever felt like quitting and not quitting and stopping the race, but quitting on my effort. I just wanted to spin out there at 120 watts. But it was hot and it, the pavement was so bad. <laughs> I do not blame you. But I didn't. So here's, oh. the, here's the, the bridge. We'll be going into the bridge. You can see this is the second lap. Um, hopefully the video does it a little bit of justice, <laughs> but it does not. You can't see it that well. I mean, so there's metal plates. You can see a little bit of up and down, but the camera actually stabilizes it, it a lot. Um, trying to see if you can notice the water bottle that had gone down. Um, I don't think so, but yeah, this bridge was just terrible. And from what I hear, it actually improved. It used to have some huge potholes that were filled in, um, but you see the metal plates. I mean, it is a pretty dangerous bridge. Um, talk to Jacob um, the next week, and he was in the pro field, and he said that the men took it pretty easy and then oftentimes attacked after the bridge. So just, you know, but that, that was terrible. So here I am by myself, and this is the last couple miles of the race, and Su Lin catches me and says, well, why don't we just pace line it to the, the end? She actually kind of flew by me, and then I, it gave me a little motivation, and I did a hard effort to get on our wheel, and when she saw that, she said, let's just pace line. So I suggested 10 or 15 seconds, and then the 10 or 15 seconds, I, my heart rate is at 180, which is about my max. <laughs> um, so then I tell her, how about you do longer pulls? You're a cat three, you caught me from a flat tire. I won't contend you for the sprint, not that I had anything left anyway. Um, she thought about it for a minute and then kind of said, if you're serious, you know, I can take longer pulls. And I absolutely was serious. I was, I was dying. At one point I threw up a little bit in my mouth. Um, I was thinking, who does this? Who drives four hours <laughs> to suffer, to, to throw up in their mouth and be, be feeling like they're dying on a bumpy road in San Ardo? Then I said, well, that's me. And all <laughs> I want to do is go back next year and do it better. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. There was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is where I got caught to on this section. It just felt like it was going on forever. Well, it was. This was the <laughs> longest road. It was the, yeah. like, what, the 12 mile stretch or yeah. something? Eight, yeah. eight, ten. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, I, I see the effort that she's doing, and it is not matching the effort that I am doing, um, at least in my head. Um, as we're kind of coming into the town, I'm, I, I tell her at one point, like, you can take it the rest of the way and I'll try to just film you. But I couldn't even do that. I, it, it's probably the closest I've ever been to really just blowing up because I couldn't even finish the race. Well, I did, but, you know, <laughs> very, very slow pace. You know, but it is, um, I don't know, I think it's important to kind of dig deep mentally and, and suffer kind of as you train. Uh, I tell like the kids I work with, um, try to have it be my philosophy in life to kind of embrace the suffering. And I think when you're able to suffer physically on the bike, I really do believe that some of the things that you encounter in life, you're able to, to handle a little bit better um, might sound crazy, but that, you know, I, I believe it translates kind of physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, where it's all connected. Yeah, that was a test, <laughs> a good test for that. Um, so on this stretch, I was with a group, we were in a group of three taking turns, just kind of random turns. Mm -hmm. uh, and going into this last stretch, one of the women decided to just try to take off. And it was not working. Um, meanwhile, another woman that I was with was, I think she was trying to play us. She was complaining, like saying like, oh, this heat is so bad, which we were all thinking. Um, and then like complaining about her bike, something was not right with her bike. And so the second she started saying that, I was like, she's gonna try to spirit for the finish. 
Um, which is why I was surprised the other woman just kind of tried to take off up the hill and then she had no more and so we just went around her. Um, but that, that was, I was cackling inside because <laughs> it was, yeah, I just, I could see it happening. <laughs> but it was, it was a fun finish. And here we're going through the little town of San Ardo. There's like, you know, Two I think blocks. one one grocery store, uh, the the tiny library. Yeah, we have about a mile to go, a little over a mile. Um, and we go past the start line. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the start line and we have to go past it. And we weren't quite sure where that turnoff was. We mm -hmm. were driving, trying to figure it out. Um, but I'm glad I finally... So there is the start-finish line yeah. and then... I the, mean, not the start-finish start, start line, start. the start line. And then I believe it's like one point something miles up right to now. the left. But the the winner of the Cat 4-5 Yay. race was, was Gwen. Um, we met her. She said she's never won before. So congratulations to her. And she actually was not part of Alto Velo. So despite all of the, you know, tactics, she was able to kind of hold on. She said it, it really got stretched out. But she was excited to have her first first victory and then I think um, in the cat three Alto Velo took first and second Su Lin was also from Alto Velo so just oh, oh. trying to get a few of those things out there because once the the race is over it's it's over so get some good video and so actually for our category Gwen was first and then Alto Velo was second third fourth and sixth so they, they hung on there very good. And Andrea, the very nice woman who, you know, introduced us to everyone, she won the, the Masters. And she was a good wheel to follow <laughs> for as long as we had it. Because <laughs> she was making moves. She was passing good. And I think at some point here, as I tell Sulin, I'll just record you, but as we're going up, You'll see the feed zone here. Um, hope I didn't miss it. No. Um, but yeah, it's coming up a little hill and she just rides me off her wheel and I'm, I think I, I just blow up. It was, it was a very bad feeling. Well, <laughs> and these are the people coming down from the finish. Mm -hmm. So they make you ride back the mile. And, and we're going to see you here coming up, Marlene. I think you do a little yell. Uh, I barely see you. I'm still in, in the red at, at this point. Oh. You think she was worried about you passing her at all? I think so. I don't think she really trusted my word, and so she does a hard effort because, yeah, I'm doing 280. And and I cannot. I'm really trying to go here. Wow. Oh, yeah, look. Oh she my gosh, 186. Off. Yeah, my heart rate is just done. And you see, I wow. I know I can see the turn, and I just I'm done. And you see, I slow down to oh gosh, nine miles an hour. I don't know what I was doing before, it was but time. look at that four percent. Mm -hmm. Good. And so a little, little disappointing. I couldn't even get some good video footage of her coming across across the line. Okay, it was a not um, picture-worthy finish mm -hmm. line anyways. It was right off the freeway. Um, and pretty soon we're going to see you here, I, I think. Oh, there you are. Go, 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 go. I think that's you. <laughs> I ended up actually stopping there and talking with one of the Alto Velo girls. Uh-huh, and then when I came back, we, we yeah. ride back together. So I was out of water. We were so thankful for the hostess at our Airbnb to go back and shower before driving back four hours. Had to, um, yeah, it was so hot at this point. Oh, 200 meters to go, I think that was. Uh-huh, and I'm doing all I can. Feels like above threshold. Mm, 120? Oh, look at that. Turn in the corner. Yeah, that's what happens when you blow up, but it was a good experience, and yeah, Looking forward to being in a little bit better shape next year and, you know, trying to see what we can 
can find. So. Yeah, it was. I hope it was easy to be a little bit different, but I would go back. I would do it again. I'd yeah. stay with Melinda. <laughs> Looking forward to what it has to offer. Yay. So. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time. It'll be some off season, and, and then we'll be back.